This tutorial video covers basic principles for connecting SweetCG to a hardware video switcher, sometimes called a vision mixer, for the purpose of performing a luma or chroma key to maintain a graphics transparency. SweetCG's built-in character generator generates an NDI feed for distribution to other production devices and or software applications across an IP network. However, a hardware switcher in many cases does not have the ability to use NDI sources and must capture the video feed through a physical input port on the switcher itself. A graphic is layered over the cameras and other sources. Along with the part of the graphic that you see, which is called a fill, there is a second part of the graphic called a key. The key defines what part of the graphic is opaque, transparent, and anywhere in between. The NDI feed contains both the key and the fill. Some hardware switchers allow you to use two cables to send both key and fill separately to the switcher itself. But when dealing with a single SDI or HDMI cable, you can only send the fill information. A chroma or luma key gives some limited ability to restore the key to the graphics feed. This is done by making sure that everything that is supposed to be removed or keyed out is the same color. A luma key is based on luminance, and the keyed color is almost always black, where a chroma key is based on color. Chroma key is employed all of the time in movie special effects, and you often see green or blue being used. Many modern switchers have SDI and or HDMI inputs for connecting cameras. These inputs can also be used for connecting a computer to display a PowerPoint presentation or the playback of a video clip. The principles for connecting SweetCG to this style of switcher are the same, but it does require a few extra steps to make it all work. For this tutorial video, we'll be practicing on a Blackmagic Design ATEM switcher. We're going to go over the physical connections, additional software setup for SweetCG, and configure the ATEM for Luma and Chroma keys. Other switchers will have different steps to make it all work, so refer to the documentation for those products to ensure proper connections and configurations. First, let's review some cable diagrams. Here we have a laptop running SweetCG and an ATEM switcher. An HDMI cable is used to connect the laptop's HDMI output to one of the ATEM's HDMI inputs. You might also need to use an HDMI to SDI converter if your switcher lacks HDMI inputs. That seems simple enough, but depending on the brand name and the model, there is probably a little more work to do. The Windows operating system will see the ATEM as another computer monitor, but the default settings might not be what you need for the switcher. The desktop needs to be set up for extended display, and the extended display resolution might need to be modified to meet the switcher's specifications. In the ATEM software, my session is set up for a 1280 by 720. So my extended display also needs to be set up for that resolution. Different switchers might be more flexible with these settings, but as a general rule, matching hardware settings to avoid resolution scaling within the switcher is preferred. Once the hardware connection is set up, you should see something on your video switcher when previewing the laptop source. You will probably see the laptop's wallpaper, but you might also see a clone of what you see on the laptop's built-in display. Here we have SweetCG running already and can see the NDI graphics in the built-in confidence monitor. Now we need to get that feed on the extended display. To do that, we're going to download the free NDI tools pack from NewTek. Download NDI tools and install it. Don't worry, I'll wait for you. Okay, I'm not going to wait. Pause the video and then start playing it again once you've installed NDI Tools. Once NDI Tools is installed, you want to open Studio Monitor. Studio Monitor is a great tool for monitoring NDI feeds on your network. Right click in the application and find the computer running SweetCG and select the SweetCG feed. Now that you can see the NDI graphics, there are a few extra settings we want to check. Make sure safe title margins, tally, VU meters, 
and all the other potential visual indicators are unchecked. What you see on this window will be what you see on your switcher. Then go to Settings, Output, Monitor 2. This will load Studio Monitor full screen on the extended display. Let's take a look at the Atom Multiviewer. We can see the NDI Suite CG graphics now, but Studio Monitor is showing a checkerboard background where there is transparency. Let's go to Suite CG and go to the CG Settings tab. Under Output Settings are Background Options. Transparent is selected by default. Let's change it to Black for a Luma key. We'll try a Chroma key later. Now we can see in the Atom Multiviewer that the checkerboard background is gone from the Sweet CG graphics. The Sweet CG computer is now configured for Luma keying for any hardware switcher. Be warned, however, that because this is an extended display, the mouse cursor can still access the screen as if it was another monitor sitting right next to the laptop. If you're not careful, the mouse pointer can show up on your production. Our next steps will take us into the Atom software. If you are using a different hardware switcher, refer to the manufacturer's documentation for configuring a Luma key. In the Atom software, the preferred method of keying Sweet CG graphics is a downstream Luma key. Here I have a video source designated as background on input 1, and then Sweet CG as an HDMI source on input 2. I'm going to start by activating DSK1. On the right palettes panel, let's expand downstream keys. Here at key one, we're given a fill source and a key source. I'm going to set both key and fill to the Sweet CG HDMI source. Now in our program monitor, we see the Sweet CG graphics feed. If I click the DSK1 on air button, we see the graphics layer appear and disappear. The DSK is layered on top of the program bus. This allows you to switch camera sources in your game and ensure the graphics feed doesn't get removed during a cut or transition in the same way an upstream key would be. However, as you can see, the key isn't quite set up yet. Make sure mask and pre-multiplied key are unchecked. Then drag the clip slider just a little bit to the right. We only need to bring it to about 10%. We want to get as close as we can before elements of the graphics start getting keyed out as well. We want smooth edges. We can leave the gain slider at 100%. As we look at the logos on the score bug, it looks like something might be wrong but it's difficult to see. Let's go back to Sweet CG and select the matchup graphic. Now you can see that portions of each logo have been caught in the keyer. That's because those parts of the logo were dark enough to get filtered out by the Luma key. There are two options. You can use a photo editing program like Photoshop to adjust the contrast of the logo to lighten up those very dark colors, or you can adjust their keyer opacities. Keyer Opacities is a feature we added specifically for simplifying keyer operations by giving you the ability to make the team logos translucent, blending it with the background colors so it avoids getting keyed out. It's a simple but effective tool when you don't have any other quick options. In the same manner, the clock camera opacity will adjust the clock camera feeds when using them with your graphics packages. This can be helpful if the dark background of the scoreboard LED digits gets caught in the Luma key. While Sweet CG recommends Luma keys, a Chroma key is also acceptable. Depending on the quality of the hardware switcher's keyer, a Chroma key can sometimes leave a halo around the graphics. You will want to experiment to find the best option for your equipment. The Atom software does not permit a Chroma key inside the downstream keyer but it is allowed as an upstream key. An upstream key, however, is a little more cumbersome than the downstream keys. Let's set up the key and see why. 
First, let's go to Sweet CG's CG Settings tab. Now select Color for the background. The default color is green. Clicking the color box will launch the color picker, but let's leave it at green for now. If we go back to the ATEM software, we can see the DSK isn't working anymore since all of the black background is gone. Let's take out the DSK and collapse that portion of the palettes panel. Now let's expand upstream key one. Here we only have a fill source, so there is no option to provide a key source. So let's select the Sweet CG HDMI input. Now over here at the next transition panel, we can see background is lit up. This means that the next cut or transition will affect the background, which is to say the preview program buses will swap their sources. If we click key one in our preview monitor, we can see the Sweet CG graphics layered over the source in the preview bus. This is the primary reason that SweetCG recommends using the downstream key instead of the upstream key. With a DSK, you can switch your cameras and other sources without worrying about if the graphics feed will transition in or out unexpectedly. With an upstream key, you have to constantly be enabling and disabling the key source. Nevertheless, this is a user preference so do whatever makes you feel more comfortable. With the upstream key set so we can see it in the preview monitor, let's look at the upstream key settings. The hue will let you select the color upon which to base the chroma key. Then the various sliders can be used to fine tune the keyer to try to eliminate as much of the color as possible without starting to remove desired pixels. As we fine tune the sliders, we can see the effect they have on the graphics in the preview monitor. Once you feel you have it set as best as it can be, you can collapse the upstream key settings. With a single HDMI cord and studio monitor from NewTek's free NDI tools package, setting up SweetCG for hardware switchers is fairly straightforward. This method can be used with other software-based systems as well, provided that they have physical inputs for HDMI or SDI, and the production software has Chroma or Luma key capabilities.